Ukraine has urged the EU to support a plan to buy one million artillery shells to help Kyiv launch a counteroffensive against Russia. Now, the embattled nation is burning through shells faster than its allies can make them. EU defence ministers are meeting in Stockholm to decide on more military support. And they'll also discuss plans for joint weapons procurement, as well as ramping up production as the bloc seeks to replenish its own stockpiles. So we need to use what we already have, what the European armies already have on their stockpiles and on the command that they have passed to the industry. Second, to ask for more, going together, a common procurement of all armies that wanted to do that all together in order to provide part of this common procurement to Ukraine. We are at a decisive moment now for our support to Ukraine. It is absolutely mandatory that uh, we move towards a sort of a war economy mode in terms of supply and defense industry. We need to do whatever it takes to supply Ukraine, especially with ammunition. For more on the EU's plans, let's bring in Ross Cullen. He joins us live now from Paris. Ross, the EU has its own considerations about its stockpiles. Uh, what kind of weapons might EU ministers actually consider sending to Ukraine? Well, the Ukrainian defense minister has said that he has three items on his list that the armed forces in Ukraine need urgently, air defense systems, ammunition and more ammunition. He was very clear about that. And we have seen uh, the moves by European Union leaders to try to work out a plan for providing ammunition without critically depleting their own stockpiles. Ahead of the meeting, the NATO Secretary General said that was one of the top topics for discussion, working out each country in the European Union and in NATO, their own stockpiles, how much ammunition they have, how many am ammunition they can give, and if they can work out backfilling their own supplies so there isn't a critical uh, lack of ammunition in European Union and NATO uh, member states. So ramping up production uh, were the words uh, that he used to describe what needs to happen in terms of output of ammunition within the EU and NATO. Potentially also, though, another topic they'll be discussing is looking outside the bloc, outside the European Union, for other providers of ammunition that can help the EU build up its own stocks and also build up what it's able to supply to Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine is burning through so much ammunition, particularly at the moment, uh, fighting around the eastern town of Bakhmut, uh, so much that it needs urgently to be replenished. And the European Union is discussing how much it can offer to Ukraine without critically depleting its own resources. Mm. Meanwhile, Ross, uh, there have been reports that say a pro-Ukrainian group uh, with no ties uh, to the Ukrainian government uh, was responsible for last year's attack on the Nord Stream pipeline. The Kremlin has rejected those reports. Have EU ministers weighed in on this at all? Yeah, the Kremlin believes that it was the United States that sabotaged uh, the uh, pipelines in September last year. Uh, there is an agreement on that word. The NATO Secretary General also used the word uh, sabotage uh, this morning ahead of the meeting to describe what did happen on the pipelines. Uh, he said that at the moment there is no decisive uh, move or decision confirmation on who was uh, responsible for carrying out those attacks. But they are obviously the ministers who are meeting aware of the reports in the United States and in Germany media about it could have been a pro-Ukrainian group or Ukrainians working with maybe Polish nationals uh, to carry out the sabotage on the pipelines, something which has been categorically ruled out by the Ukrainian uh, officials for responsible for the president's office. They've ruled out any knowledge of or any approval by the Ukrainian president Volodymyr Zelensky of this plan. It could have been uh, pro-Ukrainian or Polish nationals working out with uh, the knowledge uh, of the um, presidency in Kiev. But the NATO Secretary General did comment and say that we are aware that national investigations are underway and we should wait for the conclusion of those investigations before commenting uh, further or decisively. He did also say, though, uh, that this demonstrates, uh, quote, the importance of protecting our civil undersea uh, infrastructure. And so that will also be another discussion that the ministers will be having today. All right, Ross, thank you very much for that. Ross Cullen there in Paris.